Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please ensure to like, share, and subscribe. And also click the bell notification in the top right hand corner to be made aware anytime I upload tutorials or videos to YouTube. All right, let's craft together. Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make paper flowers. Now, um, I just started making paper flowers for the first time of this week. <laughs> okay, so um, I took and I've made several sizes, as you can see here, Let me give you a little close up of my paper flowers. And I have them in the shadow box. Now I haven't put them in any particular order. So I'm just putting in them in here to try to get a guesstimate as to how many I'm going to need to make for my shadow box. These shadow boxes, um, Michaels is currently selling them. You can get three of them. They're a size eight by eight. And you can get three of them in either gray. This is the gray, black, or white. If you order online, they're only $14.99. If you go in the store, they're $30, okay? So you can get three of these, eight by eight for $14.99 if you order online. So I ordered mine online and then I went in store and picked them up, okay? Um, and I know it has kind of like a glare on there, but hopefully you guys can see. This was the very first one that I made and you can see how I started you know, making them a little bit bigger or getting a variation of sizes. So to make your paper flowers, you're gonna need some cardstock. Now I'm using cardstock that I also bought from Michaels. This is the Recollect Rec Recollections. Some people say Recollections, um, but this is 50 sheets. This is the Soda Pop. That's the colors that I'm working with is Soda Pop. Um, so you get five different colors here and the weight is 65 pounds, okay? 65 pounds or 176 um, grams. So it's 8.5, uh, eight and a half by 11. So that way you guys can see it yourself. Um, what else I wanna tell you about this? So when I cut this, I normally put it on medium cardstock, okay? Even though medium cardstock, I think is a little bit heavier. I think it's like 80 uh, pounds or something like that, but we're gonna be going with medium card stock and uh, on my Cricut Maker, I'm gonna be using medium card stock as the setting, okay? The material setting. Um, You can use either a quilling tool. Now, I could not find a quilling tool in store. I'm sure I can order one from Amazon. So I have reversible tweezers. These are Cricut reversible tweezers. I don't think I've ever used these for anything. So this will be the first time and I've had them for many, I've had them as long as I've had my Cricut Maker. Um, so I'm gonna be using these reversible tweezers. I'm also gonna show you how to do a flower with the bobby pin, okay? For those of you that don't have a reversible tweezers, um, then I'm gonna show you how to use a bobby pin to also make your flower. Um, you're gonna need some hot glue. So I have my glue gun over here heating up. You're gonna need some hot glue for the bottom of the flower to seal it, to bring it all together. And I'm gonna also be using my spatula. Now I'm using my spatula to pull it up off of the, to get my flower off the mat, okay? So you don't wanna just pull it up because you know they're kind of thin, so you don't wanna rip it. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all you need. I'm going to show you in Cricut Design Space now how, where I got the image from inside Cricut Design Space. And then after I show you where I got the image from, then I'm gonna come back and cut it and we're gonna put it together, okay? All right, so stay tuned. All right, guys, here we are. I'm gonna show you the template that I'm actually using. So I'm using this um, 
template from Cricut Design Space. This template actually, um, I'm going to give you the, the number here. Give me one second. The number for this 3D flower is um, M is in Mary, 3D is in Day, 7E is in Everybody, 1. So you can see how that number is here in the search field. If you put that number with the pound in the, um, or the, yeah, if you put that number or that item with your alpha numeric characters in there, it will automatically locate this image for you, okay? So I'm just going to hit X and say add to canvas, which it's already there, so. Um, but that's the item number that I am using, and I made this an eight by eight. So you want to go up to your um, lock proportions little key, and you want to unlock it when you bring that item number in. When you bring the item number in, go up and unlock it and type in eight and eight. So you're going to have eight for the width and eight for the height, okay? Once you do that, then you are good to go. I have it in the zero, zero position. So you can see my um, my position is at zero, uh, zero X and 0 0.003 Y. Okay, so there we have it. So at this point, you're ready to go. Um, you don't need to do anything else for this item number. You don't have to change the color or anything because the color is going to be based off of what type or color card stock you're using. So I'm going to go ahead and click on make it. And you see my flower here. You can only do one per eight and a half by 11. Okay. And so I'm not going to change to project, uh, project copies because I can just continue printing as many or cutting off as many as I need once I do the first one. Okay. So at this point, we don't need to mirror or anything. We're going to hit continue in the bottom right corner. It's recognizing my cutting machine, which is the Cricut Maker. I have the um, older Cricut Maker. I don't have the Cricut Maker. I think it's Cricut Maker 3. I don't have that. And then I'm using medium cardstock. Um, <clears throat> normally, you could choose, this is for 80 pounds. Mine's is 65. I'm going to show you here just one second if you don't mind. Um, you can see the weight of the cardstock. But I normally, even though mine is 65, I normally just go with medium. And I've not had any problems. Okay. I'm going to go back and change it to medium. All right. And then you shouldn't have anything in clamp A. I have my fine point in clamp B. And then um, I'll be pressing to load my paper here in just a moment. I'm going to make this one, I want to use the blue color because I want one of each. And so far I have one of each one of the five colors. Yep, there's five colors in this pack. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place my card stock on my mat. And I'm going to get it ready to load up to cut. And all I have to do now is just um, load my mat and cut it out. Okay. So I'm going to come back on screen with you. All right, guys. Now that we've done everything we needed to do inside Cricut Design Space, I have my paper on my mat and or my car stock on my mat i'm just making sure that it's nice and stuck to my mat because you don't want it to pull up we're going to go ahead and i'm going to load so you guys can see my cricket maker there i'm going to go ahead and load my cricket maker and let it go ahead and cut that flower out that we just walked through the process in cricket design space um, and we're going to go ahead and let Cricut cut this out. Now, once Cricut cuts this out, guys, you don't have to go back to Cricut Design Space to print the next or to cut the next flower. All you have to do is once you unload 
you're going to reload your next uh, piece of card stock and Cricut will automatically cut it. As long as you haven't changed any of the settings in Cricut Design Space, it'll continue to print these flowers. So that, or cut these flowers. That's why I don't put a number of how many flowers I want because all I have to do is unload and reload, unload and reload, and it'll continue to cut. All right, so I always keep my eye on my Cricut Maker just to make sure that, you know, everything is going as planned because you just never know sometimes. Sometimes your machine can act a fool when you least expect it to. And this mat has been used and used and used and used, so it's not as sticky, you know. So we're just gonna make sure that this cuts. So I'm gonna cut two um, out right now with you, and then I'm gonna show you how we use the reversible tweezers as opposed to using the bobby pin, okay? And again, I'm showing you the bobby pin method for those that don't have the reversible tweezers or the quilling tool. Um, I will tell you a little hee hee ha ha. I did try the drill and I didn't like it. So you see how I unloaded the mat? So now all you have to do is just pull away the excess. Just like that. And there you have the image for your flower. Now what I do is I like to keep the bottom piece of the uh, cardstock, because you just never know when you might need just a little piece of cardstock, you know, so I'm gonna keep this little part. And then I'm gonna trash this. And then um, I'm going to use, I'm using some um, orange that I did not have in that pack that I bought from Michael's, um, but I'm pretty sure this came from Michael's as well. I'm going to be using this one as well. So I'm going to now take and use my spatula, my Cricut spatula, and I'm going to use that to pull my image up off my mat. Okay, so I'm just going to go around with the spatula. Just to get my image up. So there is my flower. That's one. I'm going to load this color. Now the orange, which is really pretty. And I'm going to lay my mat flat and press down to make sure that my cardstock is good and stuck to the mat. And now you see I haven't done anything in Cricut Design Space. I'm just going to reload reload my mat and go ahead and hit the Cricut logo and it's going to take it in and it's going to now cut our next flower. So you just continue this process until you get however many flowers you think you're going to need. I think if I do about 11 of these different sizes it'll be more than enough to get inside of my um or to fill up this eight by eight so we're just going to play it by ear so i'm going to walk through the process with you guys on making two flowers then i'm going to come back when i get ready to put my when i decide how i want to put my images or my flowers in my shadow box then i'll come back and we'll walk through that together so I have to watch that top because that top wants to lift up and I don't want it to mess up my cut here. I might need to start putting a little piece of paper at the top because I noticed the top part of this mat is not as sticky so it kind of shifts a little bit. So hopefully this image cut perfectly. All right, so we're almost done here. So you see how quick they cut, guys. They cut really fast. What you're going to need is just patience and putting your flowers together. Okay? So we're going to unload. And we're going to go ahead and remove our excess. All 
All right, and then we're going to take and we're going to cut off. And you don't have to cut off any. You can throw the whole thing away if you like. But since you, you, you have your cutting machine, you never know when you may need just a little piece of, just a little piece of cardstock in a certain color. So now we have our orange. And again, I'm going to use my spatula. I'm just going to bring it over here. And I'm just going to go around to pull that up off of the mat. Okay, so there's our second one. All right, so we can put our mat up now. We're done with that. And we can put the spatula away. And we're going to be making two flowers. I want to make two flowers with you. And then um, I'm going to pause this video and I'll come back when I get ready to finish putting the shadow box together. Okay, so right now I just have the flowers in here just trying to get a feel for how many I need. So don't pay attention to how they're displayed in here because it's going to be beautiful when I get finished or at least I think so anyway. All right, so when you do your flowers, you're going to take and you're going to be starting from the end, the outer end of the flower, this side, and you're going to be rolling inward until you get to the center. When you get to the center, these last two petals, which I call petal, petals, these last two petals, we're going to bend them back and then we're going to glue it and then we will adhere these two petals with the, the glue, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of drop that down just a little bit and I'm going to take my reversible tweezers and you want to get them on the very edge you want to get them on the very edge of your um, cardstock there. Just like that. Okay. Get them on the very edge. And once you get it on the very edge, we're going to start turning it. Okay. So I'm going to turn it towards me. And you want to keep the bottom. I got it wrong. Hold on. Let me turn it this way. You want to keep the bottom of the um, you want to keep this side uh, that's uh, straight. You want to keep that um, lined up. Okay, you want to keep it lined up. So I'm going to get my reversible tweezers there on the end. Okay, you guys can see that. You're going to get it on the end. And I'm going to start turning them towards me. I'm using my left hand to help keep that bottom edge lined up. Okay, that bottom edge. Now I'm just going to roll. And the moral of the story is to keep it tight. You want to keep it tight. If you don't do anything else, uh oh. If you don't do anything else right, guys, keep it tight. Because if you don't hold it tight, it's going to fall just like it just did me. <laughs> oh, that was funny. All right, here we go. Let me get it right. All right, I got it on the edge. Going to start twirling here. And I'm using my left, I'm going to use my left hand to help me to. Keep it going um, lined up at the bottom. And then once I get a little bit, little, little ways down here, then I'll show you guys what I mean, how you want that bottom to line up. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. Okay. Because that's what's going to help your flower stay together. Okay. All right, so just keep turning and you want to make sure that that bottom, hopefully you guys can see that, that that bottom is flat, okay? You want that bottom flat. You do not want it to be, you know, not lined up properly, okay? I'm just going to keep turning. Oops. And don't panic. Don't panic. As long as you had it tight, you're going to be good. 
All right. So I'm just going to go in here and use my reversible tweezers to kind of hold that back. And then I'm just going to go back and pick it up where I left off. And actually, I'm going to show you something. I can just really use my fingers from this point. And I'm going to show you guys, it's still going to be perfect. Okay, and just get it tight. Tight is the key. Do not panic. A lot of people that um, come in it, um, in my group talked about how theirs was like really, really small and how they couldn't get it right. I'm doing, I'm continuing on with this video because I want to show you that you don't have to be perfect to do these and the outcome is still going to be good. You saw how I've dropped it, picked it up and just use my fingers to keep it going. The main thing is keeping that bottom part flat. Okay. You want to keep that bottom flat. So I'm just using my fingers and I'm using my left hand to kind of pull tight as I'm wrapping with the right. Okay. The main thing is getting the center of it nice and tight, okay? So get that center nice and tight. Everything else is going to be Gucci, baby. Gucci, baby. The first time I did it, I was like, oh, this takes too long. But then I realized that you ain't got to be perfect. You just got to, you know, have patience as you're doing it and just keep going. Don't stop. All right, we're getting close to the last two petals. And I'm going to take, when I get to the last two, I'm going to take and pull those last two petals back. So pull those last two petals. You just want to turn them backward, the opposite direction and what you're doing your flower. And then I'm just going to drop this, okay? And I'm dropping it so that um, it can bloom a little bit, okay? So I'm just gonna let it go. Just like that, just let it go. And there you have your flower. All right, so what we're gonna do is, hopefully you guys can see that perfectly. I'm trying to keep it from starting to unravel. So I'm just gonna pull those last two pieces back. Okay, and there you have your flower. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it upside down and this is the side that you're going to glue, okay? So let me get something to help me here. All right, so you just drop your flower and then you just want to make sure that you have those last two petals kind of pulled back so that you're exposing the bottom part of the flower because this is the part that we're going to be gluing, okay? So hopefully you guys can see that pretty good. We're going to put the hot glue on here. And just be generous with the hot glue, guys. Just be generous. It doesn't have to be pretty because they're not going to see this part. And you can always go in and pull up any part of the glue that's on the sides. All we're doing is just making sure that we adhere that bottom together. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and let that get itself together. And while that's kind of drying a little bit, okay, so you see how I got that glue all nicely on that bottom? That's exactly what you want to do, okay? And like I said, you guys saw me drop it. Don't panic. Just keep, just keep it together and keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling, and keeping it lined up on that bottom so that it's flat. So that once this dries, you know, your flower will stay together, okay? And don't be like me, because sometimes I don't want to wait, because you can burn yourself with this hot glue, okay? So don't burn yourself. 
but we're going to give that a minute and we're going to take these last two petals and we're going to take the one next to the last and we're going to secure it with glue to the edge to the um, end of one of these petals and then we're going to take that very last petal and put it on our bottom okay so i'm just going to take and put a little piece of a little bit of glue on this next to last right here on the outer side and we're going to now bring it down so that it's going in the same direction as the other I think I took it over too far all right I'm going to put it on that outer edge and then I'm going to put that center down on top of the other glue and get my finger off of it and as that glue dries if you get it on the side like I did here just take it and pull it up okay All right, we got our flower, guys. Look at that. We got our flower. And, you know, you're going to make sure that you let it dry all the way since I'm trying to show you I'm going a little bit faster than I normally would. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start taking these petals and I'm going to start peeling them backward. Let me get this glue off of this one. my hand kind of touched it all right so now i'm just going to start taking the petals and i'm going to start pulling them kind of open and that's what's going to help you to expand your flower so if you get the flower nice and tight in the center then you can kind of let it go not let it go but kind of loosen it up a little bit so that your flower can be larger okay if you have it too tight your flower is going to be very small so if you want to get the very small ones, then you can just continue to roll it, continue, you know, all the way tight. Otherwise, kind of let it up a little bit after you get the center part going. And then you're just going to, you know, free it up a little bit so that once you get to this part, it'll allow you to make your flower bigger. Make it look like it's blooming, baby. Just take your time. This is a craft that takes patience guys okay takes patience and that's probably why i haven't made these before because i didn't want to have to worry about you know going super super duper slow all right there we have our flower okay hopefully you guys can see that turned out pretty if you get any glue you know like i did on the sides just kind of let it get a little bit dry and then peel it off like i did and so now we have one flower that we made with our um reversible tweezers and it's all together don't worry about how that bottom part looks because it's going to be inside the shadow box and they're not going to be able to see it okay so that's one flower now i'm going to use my bobby pin on the second one same thing you're going I'm going to use the closed end towards the flat side okay so I'm just going to stick that paper inside the bobby pin hopefully you guys can see that and you wouldn't want to get it on the edge like you would have with the reversible tweezers and then I'm going to use my left hand to start uh, turning it or to get it, you know, where I can get it around the bobby pin. And then I'm going to start turning it towards myself. Once I get it going here. Okay, so I'm just going to start rolling it. I 
think I started going on the other side this time, but it's all good. You just keep rolling your bobby pin. So you see how I got it on there? Let's see if you guys can see it. And you wanna make sure that that bottom part is going to be laying flat, okay? You want the bottom laying flat. And you're just gonna roll it. Now, I'm gonna show you here how to make this a lot larger than this last one that we did, okay? So the goal is get it nice and tight in the center, okay? Get it nice and tight in the center. And once you get it nice and tight in the center, I'm just using my fingers now, okay? Again, I'm just using my fingers. And all I wanna do is make sure that, you know, I'm keeping it going in the right direction and laying flat on that bottom, okay? So we're just gonna keep rolling. And I'm gonna show you here that I can even pull this bobby pin out now and just use my fingers. Because the main thing is just getting this, the middle part started. So I'm just using my fingers now. And I'm keeping that bottom laying flat, okay? And I'm not rolling it as tight as I did the center. That's because I want this flower to be larger than that previous flower. So I'm just using my right hand to roll, using my left hand to kind of help me keep it going in the right direction. And like I said, I'm not rolling it as tight as I rolled the previous one. And that's because I want, so you're gonna keep that bottom, keep that bottom flat, okay? Keep that bottom flat, that's the name of the game but I'm not rolling it as tight as I rolled the previous one. And like I said, the purpose for that is because I wanna show you how you can make it even larger. So in Cricut Design Space, this flower we did eight by eight. If you wanna go larger, you're gonna to have to invest in 12 by 12 card stock, okay? So now we're at the end and I wanna show you here. You guys see how that's flat? Everything should be flat on that bottom for when you get ready to glue it, okay? And when you get to the last two petals, you're going to pull those last two petals backwards, okay? And don't, you see how I let it go? Don't be shocked. Don't, don't panic, guys. Just keep it together. Just keep it together. I'm trying to hold it where you guys can see it without it falling. But you're going to see here how this is going to be much larger now than that previous flower. You can already see the difference, okay? You can already tell the difference between the two. I use the bobby pin. You can get the large flower even with the reversible tweezers. You just wanna make the center tight and then the rest, you just wanna keep it going in the right direction but not pulling it as tight. The tighter you pull it, the smaller your flower is going to be, okay? But you see, we're gonna have a lot more room to bloom this one out and it already looks pretty bloomed compared to this one, okay? But you can get the same effect whether you use the bobby pin or the reversible tweezers, doesn't matter, okay? It's just that this one is um, done really, really tight and this one is tight in the beginning and then I freed it up some, okay? So at this point, we're gonna flip that baby over now, I will caution you that this one will take you a little bit more work on that bottom, okay? It's going to take you a little bit more work on the bottom, but you got it, okay? You got it, guys. So, I'm going to go ahead and pull back on those last two, like I told you. And just take your time. Just take your time. Because the good thing about this is if you didn't get it out, <laughs> I told y'all to be careful with the glue gun, then I just touched myself right there. Um, but the good thing about this is if it's if you don't get it glued down good because of the size from here, you can always add glue on the inside if you need to. So what I'm doing here is just kind of pulling it a little bit around to kind of get it to where I can glue my baby, okay? And where it's gonna still be, you know, pulled together, all right? 
So we're just gonna come around. It doesn't seem like I'm wrapping it, but I am. Okay. And we're gonna get that down. Just like that. All right, hold on, let me grab it a little bit. I let it go a little bit too far. So. All right. I'm just getting it a little bit tighter so I can get my glue going on the flower and not my hand. So. All right, there we go. Now it's gonna look like it's gonna be much smaller, but you guys are gonna see here in just a moment that it's not. All right, nice and flat. And then we're gonna start using that glue generously because that's what's going to secure it for us. And I'm gonna take another, I had to let it go because I'm out of glue. So I'm gonna reload here. I'm gonna reload. Let me get this glue off my hand because I don't wanna have a whole glue mess going on. And so my glue is not hot enough to burn me, but that glue gun, that little edge sure did get me. All right, so I'm gonna pull this down just like that. You just wanna make sure you get it, you know, going in the right direction here. And again, I'm gonna shift that over. And use my glue. When you put that little bottom part on, guys, it's going to help to cover what you see here. So that's why I say make it generous because they're not going to be looking at the bottom anyway because it's going to be inside that shadow box. Okay. Get that glue off my hands and kind of get this to dry in here. All right, got that going. We're going to put a little bit of glue on that second to the last because that's what we're going to use to have it to stick to the outside. This part right here, we're going to have that stick to that. And then we're going to flip that last little part over. So that one there and that one there. Okay. Give it a little chance to get dry up in there. Move some of this excess glue out my way and off my hands. All right, we're going to give that a second to dry, and I'm going to cut my glue gun off. All right. So I'm going to show you here, give it a second, because I did use a generous amount of glue to let it dry. And then we're going to start peeling. We're going to start doing our petals. Here we go. All right. We're going to start peeling this one back. Pulling it back. I think I unplugged my printer by accident. I touched the cord. Or at least it sound like it anyway. All right, so just keep turning your flower around and pulling back on the petals individually. I recommend individually so that you can get them all. 
Yeah, I did. I unplugged my printer by accident because I hear it over there reconnecting. And I got a little bit of glue on the front part here. And all I'm going to do is just grab it and pull it off. So don't panic. It's going to be perfect. Don't panic. It's going to be perfect. And like I said, if you have any openings on here, all you have to do is just add a little bit of glue and pull it together. So I'm going to use my reversible tweezers here to kind of get these and bend them back. So you can use your fingers or you can use the, the tweezers. I don't like using these because, you know, my mind don't go in the reverse like that. But some of these are... All right, I'm going to try to get these in this center, open up a little bit. This one is going to be much bigger, as you guys are going to see here in just a moment. I got a little glue right there. Let me see if I can pull this up. There we go. All right, so got a little bit of glue on the top part, but all you got to do is let it cool and then pull it off. Let's see if I can get my nail in there. There we go. So I wanted to do this all the way with you guys to show you I'm not experienced at doing paper flowers. This is my first week working on paper flowers, and you don't have to be perfect, and you're still going to have a perfect outcome. Let's say you don't have to be perfect as you're making it. You know, if you drop it, don't trash it, guys. Just pick it up and keep going like you saw me do. And I'll look back at this video and laugh at myself. Hopefully, you guys get a couple laughs out of it, but continue to make your flower. I'm just picking up this glue that got in that extra space because I want my flower to still be perfect. All right, there we go. All right, so now you can see the difference in the two flowers. You see the difference in them. This one is larger than this one. And I'm just going to keep working a little magic to keep pulling that tightness on that inside to fill up that extra space since it's larger. But they're both perfect, guys. Okay? So, um, like I said, you can use the quilling tool if you have a quilling tool. If you don't know what a quilling tool is, just pull it up on Amazon. You know Amazon has everything. I checked Michael's in store. They do not carry it, and they said they don't sell it online. But all the stores were out of it within a decent drive. To me, all of the stores were out of it. Um, but the quilling tool, you can use that. Follow the same process. You saw me use my bobby pin. Okay. And your reversible tweezers. So you have now, I've shown you two different ways that you can do these flowers to get the super large one or to get the small one. Okay. That's your larger flower, and then that's your smaller one, okay? So you can see that when I did these, I got the larger ones, and then I got the super small ones, okay? So like I said, I think it's going to take about a good, I'm going to show you once I put these in here, they're going to blend perfectly with the others. So I'm just going to take my top off. And no rhyme or reason right now because I'm just trying to get a feel for how many I'm going to need. And I don't want to have the same colors next to each other. So I'm going to throw those in. And then I'm going to put my top back on. And the shadow box here. Okay. 
and I'm not putting it all away because I'm going to keep opening it, opening it up. So I'm not putting all of them on here. But once you get all your flowers in there, they're going to turn out, it's going to turn out so pretty. I got two flowers. They just take each other. But I think it's going to take, let's see, I have two, four, six, eight. I think it's going to take about 11 or 12 flowers in different sizes to fill this up. So I'm going to have some really small ones. So right now I have four small ones and then I have um, four large ones. Okay. So, or actually, yeah, four large and three, four large and four small, because I have eight of them. Okay, so I have four small and four large size, larger size ones. And I'm just going to continue putting these in until I get it filled up. Now, it may take more, but I'm thinking a good, I'm going to say 13. I'm going to say, I'm, that's going to be my guesstimate, that it's going to take me about 13 flowers to fill this up, okay? And then I'm going to put some vinyl on the outside with a saying for my mom for Mother's Day, okay? So, yeah, that is how you make your paper, or that is how I made my paper flowers. I want the process to feel very seamless for you. I want you to see that it's very, very easy. Don't panic. Um, I could have stopped this video and started over to make it look perfect, but I did not want to do that. I wanted you guys to get the real down dirty when it comes to these paper flowers. It is not hard to make them. Like I said, make sure you get that center tight. Once you get that center tight, you can just use your bare hands to continue rolling. Okay. Um, but the more freely or loosely you leave it, then you do have more of a challenge with gluing that bottom. But it can be done, as you saw me, do it. You wouldn't know which one of these flowers I used, the reversible tweezers, which flower I did with the bobby pin, none of that. Now, you can use a drill with the bobby pin. I tried it, and Lord Jesus, I'm t I must be heavy-handed because the, the, it, was, it was going too fast, and when I slow it down, it, it was a mess. It, it was a, that's what I should have taken so y'all could have cracked up like I did. But I have retired my drill, and I will not be doing that process, okay? So, reversible tweezers, bobby pin. If you got a bobby pin at home, and I know if you female, you got a bobby pin. And I know if you married to a female, you got a bobby pin, okay? But bobby pin, cardstock, and I showed you my cardstock that I'm using because I know I get a lot of questions about what cardstock this is soda pop. Soda Pop is the color. Soda Pop is the, the color. Recollections. 65 pound weight, 50 sheets, and eight and a half by 11. I got this from Michaels for $5.99. Okay. The orange, I'm pretty sure I got from Michaels as well. It is not a part of this pack, as you can see. So when you say, Miss Doris, you had some orange. Mine didn't have no orange. My orange came from a separate pack that I've already, um, you know. Using. So I'm going to finish up and once I get them all done and I'm going to guess about 13, now I'm going to change it to 14, maybe 13. I'm going I'm to say 14 to be on the safe side. 15, 15 to be on the safe side. I'm going to do 15 flowers and then I'm going to come back and we're going to put it together, together. We're going to put it together, together. Okay. And then I'll have my vinyl cut out for the wording that I want to use. All right. All right, so I'll see you shortly so we can put this baby together for our mother for Mother's Day. All right, all right, see you. All right, guys, I have completed all of my roses, my paper roses. I have 16 of them to be exact. And I have went in and cleaned uh, my glass on my shadow box. And I cut out a piece of... Um, cardstock and the same size of my backing because I want to have a colorful backing instead of just the brown and so I did that um, like I said cardstock same size as my backing for the 8x8 as you can see there and then I went ahead and I cut out the mom I love you and it's in gray I decided to use gray since the frame is gray um, this is kind of, you know, felt like it would kind of blend in. It's more like on the silver side. But 
I felt it would go really nice with that frame okay so I'm gonna weed that out and put that on the front okay so with our flowers I have a total of like I said of 16 flowers and so when you put your flowers in one of the things I realized is that you're gonna have to push them downward so that they do show or like go down instead of just laying out flat so just want to make sure you guys can see it okay so I'm gonna be laying the different colors I'm just gonna alternate to get all 16 of them in here and even though they may look like they're gonna be sticking up some I don't have to worry about that because I'm gonna push them all down and they're really good once I get them all in because I don't want like a bunch of space showing so you'll see what I mean here in just a moment push your petals downward downward okay and before I close it up I'm gonna go in and make sure it looks nice from the other side so remember that that backing I kept telling you guys don't worry about the glue being on the back side that's because this is going to be on the side that nobody is going to be able to see so you don't have to get you know really wound up about that so I'm just putting them all in trying to space them out where no one color is you know sitting next to the other and it's gonna look like it's not possible but you guys are gonna see here in just a moment because you know I've already tested this before I started my little video I had them all in here nice and pretty and then I took them out so I could show you how I was gonna do it all right so once you get them all in you want to just use your fingers and push those petals downward so that they're all going down in your shadow box and not laying flat out because if they're laying flat out on top of your shadow box it's not going to close nicely but i want this to be full of my roses so i'm just going to test it to see what it looks like and i actually have one flower left over so I'm just going to test this to see what it'll look like. So you guys see that? Beautiful. Beautiful. So I think I'm going to squeeze this last flower in. And then I'm going to close her up. So I want to put this one right in this area right here. So get it in push those petals down so again this is 16 flowers various sizes so I did small medium and kind of large push those petals down to get them all in there nicely you just want to be able to see like a really cute flower without a lot of space okay that looks good. And that looks good. Okay. So I'll put my green down first. And then I'm going to use my spatula to help me to make sure that this part right here, I want to make sure that they are pushed over. So when I get ready to close this up, it goes down perfectly all right so I got all my petals down just like that and we're gonna put this down and then we're gonna put our top on and this is where you're going to use a little bit of pressure just a little bit of pressure to close it up okay.
Kind of play with it a little bit to make sure that those um that your edges are out make sure your edges are out so that you can get it closed over so i'm just going to use my spatula kind of help me along with my finger because this baby is packed okay close it up in over here now you don't have to put all 16 like I did you can do less I just wanted mine to be chucked full of roses so I'm just gonna play with this until I get it like I want it because I don't want to have to worry about it opening there we go you're always going to get one that wants to be difficult but we're going to get it all right guys look at that we got all 16 of those babies in there okay all right so off camera i'll get this top part up here let's see if i can do it Gotcha. There we go. All 16, and they're all nice and pretty. So now I'm going to take and put the Mom Love You on there. So I'm going to go ahead, put this to the side, and we'll put it like that so you guys can see all of our beautiful roses. Now I'm going to use my weeding tool, my Cricut weeding tool, to um, weed this final here. So when you're weeding, you're basically taking away what you don't need. So I'm going to go in and start weeding away the excess final. see that it says mom love you and then we're going to take out the additional parts that don't belong Some of these little um, openings are really, really small, so make sure you get them all if you decide to, you know, do the mom love you. I got the mom uh, love you from just typing in mom and love in images in Cricut Design Space, and this is one of the images that came up. So, didn't I have to pay on Etsy or anything like that but you can always you know find something that works better for you so and we're gonna get that little heart 
heart. All right, so I'm going to get my um, transfer tape. It's been so long since I used transfer tape and all that good stuff. All right, let me get my transfer tape. And I only need just a little piece. This is going to transfer the vinyl over to our shadow box for us. So you just use the transfer tape and I'm going to take my spatula and make sure that I transfer the mom love you over to the transfer tape really nicely. That's why you want to make sure you clean your glass so that this sticks with no problem. And I'm going to decide where I want to put this. I don't know if I want to put it down in the corner or in that um, middle area up there. So let's take a look here. Put that down so you guys can see here. All right. So once you transfer it over, you should be able to lift up your vinyl from the paper backing. And sometimes you have to kind of use your finger to kind of help you along. But you don't want any vinyl left behind on your Cricut paper or on your vinyl paper. in as this part right here is acting weird to me let's see if I go from the top oops up to my finger you so I kind of feel like I want to put it down um, on the bottom but then I kind of feel like I want to put it in the center but then I feel like I want to put it down on the bottom I think I'm gonna put it in the bottom bottom corner um, let's see maybe I'll go ahead and put it in the center I'm gonna put it in the center here feels like it's lifted up out of place so I'm gonna try to get that back in order before I put it down all right so we're gonna put it right here I'm trying to make sure I got it centered That's how it's going to look with the mom and love you in the center. And before I press it down, I'm going to just take one more look. And I think it looks nice. And then you're just going to lift your transfer tape. And there you have it done and all nice and pretty all the different color flowers 16 to be exact and like I said you don't have to do 16 you can do less than um, 16 but I just wanted to make sure that I cover up as much of the extra space as possible and I would rather the cardstock color show through instead of that brown uh, from the backing here and I just realized that I put my mom on backwards. 
<laughs> so I'm going to have to shift this back part right here around because the, the, um, this part needs to be up here. So y'all don't make the same mistake I made, but I think it's gorgeous and I cannot wait to give this to my mom. I think she's going to love it. All right. All right, guys. So to make this project, you'll need, um, card stock. I used the, I think it was 65 pound. Let me just double check. Yep, 65 pound recollections. And this is called Soda Pop. That's what I used. Um, I did have a couple of orange pieces from another um, package laying around so I added a couple of those orange pieces in there because I really like that color and you're going to need hot glue your hot glue gun um, either a bobby pin or your Cricut reversible tweezers these or bobby pin um, some vinyl if you want to put something on the front of it and um, what else patience lots of patience so i would take i would say all in all i could have sat down and did all these all these flowers i could have put them together in less than an hour it was pretty quick it just seemed like it may be time consuming but it really was pretty quick okay so just take your time and trust me it will turn out beautiful i think this is going to be my mother is going to love this okay paper flowers all made with love okay and that's it guys uh the image for the flower i showed you in cricut design space i also got the mom love you from cricut design space i just searched images and i typed in mom love and that's what came up and i decided to go with that you can make it bigger i wanted to make it smaller because i wanted the flowers you know to be the focus um and don't do like i do make sure you have your hanger, you know, going in the right direction. So I'm going to take this off, unfortunately. I'm going to take it off and put it in the right direction. Um, but it's gorgeous. I absolutely love it. And the frame, uh, the shadow boxes I got from Michaels, they are three. They're eight by eight. And it's three of them for $14.99 if you get them online. Um, if you go into the store and purchase them directly, they're $30 and they come in gray. This is the gray. They come in gray, black, and white. Okay. And I want it to be a little different. Everybody use black and white. So I decided to go with the gray. All right. All right, guys, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. If you have any questions about this process, you can chime in in the comments and I will help you as best I can. It is not a difficult thing to do. It is very easy. Don't let those paper flowers scare you, okay? They are very easy to do, as I showed you. Y'all saw my, my bloopers. I dropped the flowers a couple of times. I didn't let that stop me. I just kept right on going, and that's what you should do as well, okay? Um, and make sure you leave those last two, leave those last two petals, um, and glue everything else and then do the last two petals last glue those last two petals last but i think she's gonna love it guys chime in in the comments and tell me what you think all right all right guys um if you're currently in my facebook group ken doris's cricket and creative crafters thank you guys so much for supporting me via facebook if you are interested in joining my facebook group lots of tutorials and and help when it comes to crafting in my group you can join my facebook group which is ken doris's cricket and creative crafters just send a facebook group request to the group and we'll get you in it is a private group so you do have to request to be added um, and then if you're currently subscribed to my YouTube channel, I want to thank you guys so much for the support via YouTube. If you like my method of teaching and you would like to join my um, YouTube channel, then please like, share, and subscribe. And always hit that bell notification in the top right-hand corner, guys, so that you guys can be made aware anytime I upload tutorials to YouTube. All right? All right, guys, that's my story, and I am sticking to it. And I hope you guys love my mom, Floral shadow box all right great idea for mother's day and only thing it's really going to cost you is just the time to put that baby together all right and like i said you don't have to use as many flowers as i did okay 
All right, guys, that's my storm sticking to it. And you know my motto, I haven't said it in a long time because I haven't did a video in a couple of weeks, is each one reach one so that each one can teach one. And you guys have a great day. Bye.